All right, so that'll do. I'm just gonna roll with it. <clears throat> All right, so uh, Dan Jeffrey speaking. Appreciate everyone who's taking their time out of their Sunday evening to join us. Looks like we got uh, two new members with us, Jacob H and uh, Lalo Lalo. Apologize on the pronunciation, but uh, thanks for coming up, guys. So uh, this is what we'll pretty much do every Sunday, um, same time, 10 p.m. Unless it's uh, football season, then sometimes we might change it to a Monday, but pretty sure we're still going to continue with the Sundays at 10 p.m. Eastern. So, like I said, Dan Jeffrey speaking. Um, I've been with Rocket Stocks for almost, over a year now, actually. Uh, as a trader, though, I've been exposed and gaining experience in the market for almost four and a half years at this point, I want to say. Um, actually started in crypto. And then I rolled over to learning stocks and eventually trading options all the time. And I didn't really take it serious for about probably six months to a year. Made a lot of money in the crypto market as every new lucky person does. Gave some of that back in during my first market correction, but applied those lessons to trading stocks and options. And then I jumped around with multiple different day trade strategies until I finally Went with one that just worked for me that was really easy. And then I now actually trade for the, the, the pretty much the firm that teaches the strategy. So I've been involved with a proprietary trading firm for almost a year now as well. And without them, I definitely wouldn't be the trader that I am today. So definitely give back a little bit of, of what they teach me to you guys. Plus I modify what I teach with anything. So predominantly, I like to spend a lot of time on Sundays and give everyone a nice little psychology lesson based on what I see people talking about. Or I might just go over a lesson from my own trading, which, you know, can always be a huge help to everyone else. So, you know, a big a big theme for the last couple Sundays has been, you know, really taking control of your mindset and your attitude going into the trading day and making sure that you're approaching every day as a new day, but also just not caring at all about the outcome the the problem is when you care too much about only winning and trading when those losses come up they just derail you and you start having immediate just insecurities and discouragement taking over and then you're going to bring those over into the next day and it's only going to compound and get worse so what i've been encouraging everyone to do is really instead of focusing on making money you want to flip the script and you actually want to focus on controlling your risk and making sure that you're risking appropriately in size de depending on the risk itself. So what do I mean by this is if we were to go to a stock that I traded the other day, uh, let's see what I do on Friday. Let's go to IWM because I, I know I traded this a few times last week. So on IWM, I took a short off this move here. So I only use moving averages and candlestick charts. Other guys in here, they'll use the prints. Uh, we're definitely a big component and just kind of encouraging everyone to find a method that works for you and your personality. And for me, this is what works. So an IWM, I mean, it's a $200 stock. So you got to be careful if you're going to try to risk you know big bars like this meaning if you're entering above here and your stop is way below there you're going to be giving back nearly a dollar so that's too much on a full full position entry meaning you don't want to enter this trade with a full you know 500 shares because you're about to give back 500 if this thing gets reversed like it did so instead say you have a, a max loss per trade of only a hundred dollars per trade with 500 shares then if you're entering above here and your stop loss is below there then you're only entering the trade with 100 shares so it's flipping the script on instead of focusing on making money you focus on controlling your downside and the money will take care of itself now for me personally i actually waited because we had some distance from the moving averages that i was like all right we're probably going to get a move back to it i know how iwm trades Another thing I do that's different from everybody else is I only trade the same eight to 10 stocks every single day. I just sit here on my hands. I wait for a setup that I know to show up 
from the eight to 10 stocks that I just know how they move inside and out so that I can easily gauge what is out of the ordinary or what is just another normal movement for the stock. When I saw this big bar taking out everything from to the left of it, I knew we were gonna get a short back to the 20, so I just waited. I waited for the bounce up, stayed below halfway of this bar, and my risk, keeping it pennies, was once these tails happened, and once we were below this little, little level of all these wicks, I took the short here, and I was risking to above, a little bit halfway above those wicks. So my risk on this entire trade was right around there at 22.43, up to about 22.83, which is you know 40 cents per 100 shares. So I was able to go in there with a full size, keeping my risk small, and I just let the play work out, and then we just eventually dropped, and I secured the profits right near the 20. And that was one of the winning trades on Friday. But this is what I mean by, I'm not entering the trade with the full size unless it meets the risk criteria. And last week I went 15 day trades, 15 winners, all thinking this way. So I really ho hope you guys saw that in the profits and losses as just encouragement to, when you see that if I myself, I'm not focusing on making money, but focusing on the process and it works with a ridiculously high win percentage for the week, then please do the same. The only other thing you gotta let go of is seriously just making money. I reduced in my position sizes because I saw that my trading was struggling so instead of making the damage worse for myself and risking heavier, I actually reduced the risk, risk smaller to get the emotions out of the way and just simply go back to focusing on the process. So that's one big thing that I just really hope that you guys kind of take away from it is, is how big of a game changer that is to the world of trading. If you're going to keep thinking you're going to make money every single day from the market, if, you're, if you've only been trading for three, three months, six months, nine months, I'm going to tell you right now, you, you have no right to even start making money every single day yet. You're going to put in your hours, you're going to put in your work. People who are surgeons, how many hours do they have to put in? How many rotations do they have to do? How many years of schooling do they have to do until they finally go underneath the, the scope and start slicing and dicing and stitching people up? They do a lot of work before they get to that. It's the same thing with trading. If you make money in the beginning, you got lucky. And the market's gonna take it from you. If you get too ahead of yourself and you get too, just your ego kicks in, your pride kicks in, you think you're untouchable, you're gonna risk way too heavy and blow it up. So please, if you're here learning, take things very, very slowly and you're gonna appreciate the small singles. Small singles add up. Uh, what is it, Albert Albert Einstein said like compound, the compound interest is like the eighth wonder of the world or ninth wonder of the world. There's a reason for that. So real quickly, if you started with a $100 account and you grew it by 3% every single day, after 312 days, you would have netted over one million dollars now in the very beginning three percent of a hundred dollars is just three dollars eventually it starts to add up but after 312 trading days with just growing a small hundred dollar account increasing it by three percent every single trading day you could net yourself a million dollars after you do this are you going to win every single day though right now probably not but just remember that when you do become a consistently profitable trader, you could pull this off. Have I personally done this yet? No, but it's actually something that I'm trying through other sources of income right now that I've started with a simple $100 and I've just been growing it every single day and just seeing how much I can compound this. You guys need to have the same approach to trading. Take it very slow, compound your gains, Keep yourself in check. Don't try to go big. Don't try to go for the grand slams. Just hit those singles and let the compounding of your account take over. So that's it for the lessons in terms of mental and psychology stuff. Uh, going into next week, you guys should already have some things written down. What was your average loss per trade last week? How can you cut that in half? What were the main reasons why you lost last week? How can you avoid those this week? 
And then most importantly, what is the one thing that you're going to focus on this week that you would help you pretty much become a better trader? For me, I'm going to actually get back to working on my runners, meaning after I scale out the bulk of my position, I've been noticing that I've been selling out a little bit too early. That's more than likely a, a survivability characteristic, meaning I'm having a little bit of fear of giving that profit. So I've been just kind of taking out all of my profits on the table when I had them versus kind of letting them give back a little bit. But there is a simple method that I've taught before how to stay in the trade for a very long time. And I got to get back to it. What is this method? Eight moving average. The eight simple moving average. Say you were in this trade and here's your high and you broke above the morning high and you just trailed the eight MA. Look how long you could have stayed into the stayed in the trade until it finally broke below it. You were in there for half an hour. You got in around 22070 and you got nearly a dollar forty, a dollar fifty on your shares. So I'm gonna go back to this simple method. A to A, you don't wanna do it too soon. You definitely wanna give let the stock kind of run a little bit and then use the A to A, but you're gonna see how trailing the A can kind of how to keep you in the trades. So this is definitely something that I'll be working on a lot personally for the next few weeks until I am better at letting my runners just run with the trade because the stock will travel higher or travel lower a lot longer than you think it will. On a daily chart, we all know the stock because we've been trading it a ton lately, but if we look at AMD and what it's done in the last just couple of weeks, how many people thought that after it got up to 100, it was just gonna start crashing back down? I know a lot of people did. No, it just kept running. Oh, but guess what? Look at the ADMA. Even on the daily chart, you still could have been in the trade. Obviously, once this red day was taken out the bottom of the green, you definitely could get out of the trade, but you could have caught just a multi, multi day dollar run. So that's the one thing I'm working on. Make sure you guys have something identified. That being said, quick market overview is what to expect here. Um, what we saw this week was just a lot of consolidation. Consolidating, it means you're just kind of bouncing. It's gonna break one direction or the other, either up or it's gonna go down. Uh, you have some catalyst going on with the infrastructure deal. And if the in infrastructure deal goes through and the market rallies off of it, then obviously it's gonna be good. But if the infrastructure is already sort of priced into the market, then it's gonna be a buy the rumor and then sell the news type event. So we don't know which way it's gonna break yet. We don't even know what day the, the bill is going to be or the deal is going to be signed by President Biden on. So it's definitely something you want to keep a lookout. At the same time, we still have a lots of earnings and earnings can play gaps in the market just because a company sells off on earnings or does really well on earnings. So there's a lot of uncertainty. Swing trading right now is not the ideal. There are some plays you can do. Just make sure you're not swinging over or into the earnings you're probably going to lose everything. A uh, good example is if someone thought Facebook was going to do really well on earnings. Well, let's see. We closed up here and we opened way down here. It dropped over $20 a share. That's why you just don't play earnings. You don't know unless you have some insider information, which I don't. So I can't help you. Uh, so, this, so that was the SPY. I mean, these are SPY futures. All in all, though, we're still in a bull. We're still in a bullish market. The, the the lows just keep getting higher and higher. So until these break, then you know it's we're starting to do a little bit of a correction. As for say the Qs, which is the Nasdaq, you know, like I said, we had a nice little run. We came down. We made a little bit of a new high, but we're not making a crazy new high. So I'm still skeptical of this Qs index especially if we don't really get above these highs then i would definitely anticipate a further correction um i mean if it really started to correct we would probably come back down and retest this level of resistance and consolidation as for the dow if the infrastructure deal goes through the dow is definitely going to be benefited a ton so as long as the 
stocks rally off of it, then we could have a breakout of this little consolidation here. But if not, then same thing. We're probably gonna fail to make new highs and go lower. So just be prepared, be open to the any idea. The other thing to mention this week especially is the VIX. Um, so I mean the VIX, we're coming to retest these lows. So if the VIX drops from these lows and goes lower, then you obviously know the market's gonna go higher because the VIX measures fear and volatility. So if fear and volatility is going higher than the market is usually going lower. But in this case, fear and volatility is kind of going lower. So the fear and panic and, and the volatility isn't quite there despite earnings. So it's something to watch out for. If we start making new lows on the VIX, then you obviously know the market's gonna go higher. So just kind of pay attention to all of it. Uh, gold itself had a quite a big gap down the other day. Uh, if we actually look at gold, the futures, um, I mean, look at this wick we put in. This is real time. We came, we came down, tested this support level, and we just backfired like crazy. So for those who trade gold, I love trading GDX options. It's a miners. Um, the gold is, it's honestly, it's looking weak, but you could have a bullish case too on higher time frames. If we go out to the, the weekly, the weekly time frame, I mean, we just double bounced off this area, so we could break higher. And if we do, it's going to go for quite a run. I'll tell you that myself. So that's on the gold. And then for the Bitcoin and crypto. I mean, pretty much you just got to look at Bitcoin to understand what crypto is doing. But uh, crypto had a nice rally the last, what, three weeks. Just we held a level of 30,000, broke right up or right back to the 20 moving average, which is ironically the 200 moving average on the daily, which I was anticipating some resistance at because the 200 is the most powerful moving average out there because it's long term, meaning it's the average close of the last 200 days is how this black line is created. So there's a lot of data into it and you typically see price reject or bounce off of it. We had a nice run up, came down, retested it. So what do you anticipate from here? More than likely, we got to retest this level, which is prior resistance to become support. And then we're going to start rallying up and definitely probably keep going until the end of the year. Uh, there is some things within the government and the Senate that they are trying to pass some legislation on crypto, which would help improve uh, regulation clarity, essentially, which is what all the big money needs. So I'm going to say that there are going to be news events that are going to happen. Ironically, at the same time, price levels are testing key levels. It's like the easiest way I can say it. You see it all the time in crypto market. So if we have a little bit of a pullback and the next thing you know, the government decides to pass some new legislation about regulating crypto and it's all positive news to provide a, a structure to the market and the market starts rallying, don't be surprised. Kind of what always happens. But either way, I'm definitely very, very bullish right now in the crypto market. I've been telling everyone. During this entire consolidation, just watch. We're gonna eventually start snapping out of it. It's just gonna take a matter of time. And the longer we go sideways, the bigger the move up will be. Uh, for those who are new here, uh, Jacob and Lilo, not too sure if you are exposed to crypto, but uh, my personal target for Bitcoin is right around here. 84, 76, somewhere in this range is where I think Bitcoin will be by end of the year. So that is it for me. Now we're going to move over to Lorenzo to go over TA setups and any other potential lessons he might have, earnings, et cetera, and all the tickers that people have asked him to look at. He will choose the ones that think something is there and he will give his analysis. And if honestly, if you were to write down a lot of these tickers and what he projects, there's a pretty good win rate in terms of the direction that he is anticipating and where the stock will eventually go. So that's it for me. Hope that helped everybody. And Lorenzo, take it from here. It's actually going to be Mike tonight. Mike's taking over for Lorenzo. Lorenzo's uh, on vacation at the beach. Oh, then there you go. Mike, uh, <laughs> it's going to be Mike today. Uh, same thing though. Mike, if you look into the new members, if you guys look into like the educational stuff or the future analysis, 
Uh, Mike it does a really good job with the technicals. He understands a lot of the how the market flows itself. So pay attention. He might use the term golden pocket in regards to fibs. If you don't know what fibs are, he'll probably explain them, but they definitely are crucial when it comes to trading, so take notes. And you know me too well with the uh, golden pocket. <laughs> I will definitely mention that at some point. That's what I do best. I know people. Uh, but those who don't know me, I'm Mike Taps. I'm one of the veteran traders here. I got some big shoes to fill with Lorenzo's absence, so I will do my best. Uh, thank you, Dan, for your little uh, psychology lesson market overview. We all appreciate it. Uh, I'll be looking at the t uh, tickers you guys sent first. Obviously, like with Lorenzo, if I don't see a setup I, I like or if they have earnings, I'm probably not going to look at it. So first one we have here is from KJ. We're looking at Netflix. So they've been in this huge range for, for a while now. Um, we're coming into this resistance zone around 220 or 525. Uh, if we can get above probably 530, I'd like this long for a potential long up to uh, 540. If not up at the top of this range at you know 560 area. Um, like Dan mentioned, I like the golden pocket. So if we draw from this low up to this high and look at this retracement level, bam, we're in the middle of the golden pocket. So for those who don't know what this golden pocket is, um, it's a Fibonacci retracement area that algorithms like to use when they trade. For whatever reason, they chose this. It has, probably has something to do with that. Um, this is the golden ratio. So that's a, that's a math mathematics term I'm not going to get into right now because that's kind of over my head. But basically, it's an algorithm target that these algorithms are programmed to buy and sell at. So when you see a stock come down into it, like we have here, Netflix came down into it. Uh, you can use that as a pretty strong indicator as where to buy. Now, like with all technical analysis, you need more than just one thesis when entering a trade. So a golden pocket is not a means to an end. You simply use it to strengthen your thesis one way or another. Now, with the golden pocket, you guys know I'd like to mention the one-to-one -one ratio. So if you look at this area here, you got the point 0.618. Now, the, what the one what the one-to-one -one ratio is, is a move up to this 0 0.382 level right here. Because if you add the 0.618 and the 0 0.382, I'm no math guy, but you know, that equals one. So that's often one of the first targets that these algorithms look for when to sell. You can see we came within what sense of this. So I, I holds true, but anyway, back to Netflix. Um, I do like it long if we can break this resistance level, possibly get a nice move up to the uh, top of this range here. If we fail here, I would expect uh, some more downside uh, obviously, we, this would be a higher, a lower high, so we'd expect a new lower low to be made, possibly coming back down to this 480 level. Uh, next, we have ZG. Now, this is weird because I guess they have two tickers. So I usually looked at Z, but I guess ZG is also a ticker for the same company. I had no idea, so they have two. Um, this is also from KJ. So I think they had earnings last week, and they had a bad one, so they were down 6%, but they're, they're in this falling wedge. Um, this pattern is very bullish in nature, so I like them a lot if we can break above this consolidation here around you know, 112, 113 area. Uh, we can get a nice move up to 128, uh, possibly 138. I like to set up a lot. We just gotta wait for a confirmation break. Uh, we can get a little bit tighter in this pattern, so I would wait for it to you know get tight and obviously wait for the break. So I do like the setup. I'll definitely have my alerts set, and it'll be one of the top ones for the week. Next, we have FBRR. I believe KJ also sent this one in. So they had a very bad earnings, and they were down a big percent. But they're coming into this trend line support. Now, you don't really want to catch this, because this is catching a falling knife, and you don't want to do that. Um, we closed near the lows of the day on Friday, so that's screaming bearishness to me. Uh, but we're coming down into this trend line support and also this little support area. So if we can kind of show a bottom moving pattern or like a base formation like we did here, uh, it would be a pretty good buying spot, especially for a long-term swing. 
Um, I didn't listen to their earnings call, so I'm not sure why they're down so much. So that's something you should probably look into. I mean, they could have lower guidance, which would not be good. Uh, but you want to make sure to listen to that earnings call, make sure their outlook is good. But if we can hold this level here, we could definitely have a pretty big dead cap bounce. We have a big gap to fill up to like the 230 area. So this could definitely be a potential play if we get the formation set up that we're looking for. Next would be Ford. And I actually like Ford a lot. This setup's very clean. So we have this long-term trend line here. And then we have this bull flag slash falling channel coming into this. Now, this is one of my favorite setups, and I know Lorenzo loves this setup as well. Because uh, you have this, like I said, this long-term trend line and this falling channel also into the micro golden pocket. So you just have tons of confluence of support here. So I'd be very shocked if we actually broke this level. Um, to take this long, you would need to break out past this most recent daily higher low around 14, 14.08. If we can break that, we can definitely see a nice move up um, 14.50 into the 15 area. Uh, you know, this is one of my favorite setups this week, so I really like this play. Next, we have COUP, Coop, I'm guessing. I've actually never heard of this name, but I do kind of like this. Uh, we do have earnings, though, beginning of September. So it's kind of in a weird spot. I really don't think we could chop around until earnings just because how tight this pattern is. We're in this uh, symmetrical triangle. Or you can call us a bear flag because we've had this gigantic wave of selling. So with this pattern, you really want to be patient. I know we're coming into this macro support area as well, which kind of adds to the bullish case. But your safest bet is going to be just to wait for a break. Like I mentioned, we do have earnings at the beginning of September. I doubt we chop around. But if we can uh, break out of this with some volume, I think we can go on a nice run. Volume has been kind of dead. So if we get a volume spike and a break above like 202 or 220.75 area, we could make a nice run back up to uh, the 240s. But remember, this big move down is very powerful, so the bears are probably going to step in and try to drive the price lower. So just, like I said, be cautious, uh, wait for the breaks. Uh, next we have AMAT. I like this setup a lot. So this reminds me a lot about Costco. We're in this huge ascending triangle right near all-time highs. And if you go to Costco, you're going to see a very similar pattern. They had this uh, ascending triangle right near all-time highs, and they got this very explosive move up. Now, obviously, these are two different stocks in two different sectors, but, I mean, the it's there. The setup is there. So we could chop around a little bit more. We do have earnings coming up, but I still think this setup has some potential. Um, the bulls have a long way down to the support trend line if earnings are bad. So, I mean... I did say earlier, I'm not going to, you know, bring up the stocks that have earnings, but this setup was kind of too clean not to. Um, so, yeah, if we can get a, if earnings are not bad and this pattern stays intact, then above 145, we could run. Now, since it's in blue sky territory at all time highs, price targets are going to be kind of hard to come by. But I've noticed with these more expensive stocks, they like to move in increments of $5. So break above 145, you could target 150, 155. Or if you wanted, you could just do a simple measured move. So let's see, it's around 185 for a measured move. So once again, the increments of five kind of hold true there. Yeah, the setup's super clean, but obviously wait to play until earnings happens because this thing does have some potential. Um, Wicker asked about Blink because of that cup and handle, but I'm actually going to go to a different stock with the cup and handle. Uh, he wanted an example of it, but I found something that's a little cleaner. Uh, I'm going to go over to gold, actually. Now, KJ, someone put this in the chat earlier, the cup and handle. Yeah, that's KJ. Uh, KJ, I'm sorry, but I need to uh, inflate my tires a little bit on this because Probably a year and a half ago, I made a gold analysis paper, and I did predict gold in this cup and handle pattern. So I'm sorry, but I got to take credit for that. Um, 
So he wanted to know basically what a cup and handle was. A cup and handle is probably one of the strongest bullish patterns you can you can get. And it is basically what it sounds like. The price is in this little cup pattern and looks like a U. And you get a formation of a handle like that. And what you want to do is you want to wait for the break of this handle for it to, the price to go upward. Um, the reason I didn't like blink so much, let me show you real quick. Go to a blog chart. Is because usually with a cup, I think it's a bit chilly. No, it's blue. With a cup and handle, um, at least from what my experience, I mean, I know patterns are not set in stone and they can have a little bit of flexibility on them. But normally with cup and handles, it's a little downtrend area like this. It's not so much a, uh, a symmetrical triangle like we have here. So I just think the gold one is a little bit cleaner. That's why I like it. So the way you can look at profit targets with this, especially at gold being at all-time highs, is you can do a measured move again. The way you do a measured move with the cup and handle is from the bottom of the cup to the top of the handle. And then you just project that outward. So, I mean, we didn't break it yet, but you project from the break of the handle. So hypothetically, if we say the breaks here, you'd have a profit target of $2,943. So cup and handles on the macro time frame like we have here play out extremely, extremely well, but you have to express patience because this being a weekly slash monthly chart I mean, you, you can see this. It's taken how many years for this to develop? So it could take how many years for the break to happen, how many years for the profit targets to be hit. So you just got to really stress patience with these macro patterns. Now, if you have any more questions about the cup and handle, uh, feel free to DM me over Renzo or Dan. We all have experience trading it. Now I'm going to look into some tickers that I like this week, starting with ARKK. So at first glance, this chart doesn't look too impressive, but the reason I like it is because we had this tiny little ascending triangle and we broke it to the upside. Now I'm banking on a little back test hold here. Uh, this will be a high probability play if it turns out because if you break a level of resistance and now it acts as support and holds, that's kind of strong bullish confirmation that the trend's gonna continue. So if we can hold here this week, I think ARK could have a very strong move, definitely up to this most recent high at 132. If we break that 132 level, we still do have a gap up at 143. So this is definitely a top watch for me, especially with Tesla looking so bullish because this fund has a large holding of Tesla. So keep this on watch for sure. Uh, the next one we have is Boeing. And I like Boeing a lot here on the weekly chart. We're in this massive symmetrical triangle and we're holding this trend line to a T. The reason I like it is because obviously the chart looks good, but in terms of news, the news with their 737 MAX has kind of died down. Uh, a lot of airlines are actually buying the plane again. So in terms of hurtful news that could come out with Boeing and their 737 MAX, I think it's at a minimum right now. So with that variable being out of the way, with the Dow looking pretty strong and with Boeing being such a big laggard over the past year, year and a half, I really think if we break this uh, symmetrical triangle to the upside, we could have an explosive move. Uh, you really want to see it break above 240 on the weekly chart to take it long. I would eye around 280 for profit target. We still do have a gap up at 330, which could potentially get filled, but um, that might take a while. Other targets I have are around 290 and obviously the big psychological level of 300. So I do like Boeing a lot. Uh, we, there's still some room to get tighter, so we could get a tad bit tighter before breaking, but for sure, keep them on your watch list because this is a fantastic name to swing. Uh, next would be Beyond. And I like Beyond a lot because they had this earnings report and they had a massive gap down but they held this support level here and then actually closed above all these wicks. 
So they had a very nice, strong bounce back. And if we can get over 145 or 125, I think Beyond Me could, you know, really explode here. It would break this downtrend. It would break this most recent higher low, and it would kind of explode out of this golden pocket here. And we know from trading Beyond in the past, once it starts to get some volume and move, it can move. So it also respects these retracement levels well, so you can use these as profit targets. The reason it does that is because Beyond Meat is a very algorithmically traded stock, so a lot of computers trade it back and forth with each other. Um, so yeah, I like this setup a lot as well. Wait for the break at 125 and let Beyond do all the work. What else? Now this play is going to be premature, but I'm just calling it now. I, all the cruise lines, airlines, and travel stocks are kind of showing the same pattern here. They're beginning to develop this ascending triangle, or you could call it a, a bear flag. They're all running into this massive resistance level here. And I know this pattern has a lot of room to go to get tighter, but I want to point this one thing out. The apex of this pattern, or the most tight point, is right at this next earnings date of September 30th. So, I mean, I think we could definitely chop around here to September 30th, and then once the earnings come, get a massive move. In what direction? Who knows? I can't say. I don't have a crystal ball. But I would be kind of bullish because if the Delta kind of dies down, if people start getting vaccinated again, obviously all these travel stocks will you know, have the bullish news on their favor. So this is kind of just a let's wait and see play, but all these travel stocks are showing the same pattern. So yeah, if we can break over, um, let's say 2440, with some volume after earnings, that would be a uh, nice confirmation. Take this thing on. Same with all the other travel stocks, airline stocks, all that jazz. Uh, last one I have is CRM. Now this is kind of similar to Boeing. For the past year, it hasn't really been doing anything at all. It's been lagging the Dow, been lagging the NASDAQ, been lagging the whole market. Uh, they also have earnings coming up, but the reason I like this play um, is because Notoriously, CRM has pretty good earnings reports, especially because with this old stay-at-home stuff, um, software they produce, people use it at home. So I'm not going to speculate within earnings with the play before earnings, but uh, when earnings happens and this pattern stays intact, if we get a break above or below, uh, we'll see what happens. But if we break above here, this could be the start of CRM's bull cycle. Like I mentioned, they've been lagging forever. They've been putting in recently a lot of good bullish price action with some uh, nice higher lows. So if we can just get a clean break of you know, uh, 255 with some volume, I think CRM could go on a massive, massive run. I would have long-term targets at a minimum of 300, 325, and 350. Um, it likes to move in increments of 25. So yeah and if we break to the downside i would probably look for a retest of this trend line uh it took a while to break so a confirmation bounce and hold here of this downward trend line turn support would be ideal for longs if we break that i could see it's coming back down to the low 200s and i would honestly buy this stock 200 or below all day this is a fantastic name that has phenomenal growth potential so if we get that, if we happen to get down to 200 again, I'm going to reload the boat. I have shares in my long-term account. I got my dad to get shares in his long-term account down at 200. And I recommend you guys do the same thing if we get down there. So that's all the stocks I have today. That's all the stocks you guys gave me. Um, if you have any more, just drop them in the chat right now. I can go over it. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, there was one last minute ad. Uh, what was it? Uh, Ebon, E B O N uh, by Dwight. Let's see. And then I was going to touch on one more thing. I'm just looking at Ebon. They're coming into this resistance level here. So if we can, if they can break above. They probably need to break above this, uh, the high of Friday's close. So like two sixty six. We'll go two seventy five just to be safe. They can break back above there. They could go on a little bit of run, but I mean, 
all this selling pressure over here and the lack of volume is kind of worrying. Uh, with these small names, you definitely need volume to to get them to move. But if we start to get some volume here, and you can you know continue this tiny bullish trend that you're developing, it could go on a decent run back up to uh, you know three thirty, possibly you know three ninety five area, four dollars. Any other ones? Um, not that I see. It's just I noticed that um, Colin and uh, Brody asked some for updates on one of the crypto things. So I was just gonna quickly touch upon that. Yeah, go ahead. All right, um, you can just leave your screen up as is, Mike is fine. All right, so for those who are involved in the purchasing the crypto of XRP, any trial news? So it t initially I thought about a week ago, um, there might be some talks of settlement going on just based on some things that weren't happening. And I don't think that's the case anymore. The discovery part of the trial is almost wrapped up and things are looking still very good for XRP itself. What I think is going on is the SEC is just trying to drag this out for as long as they can to wait for the government and Congress to step in with the regulation. However, the bill that they are trying to pass for the crypto only helps XRP even more. So what the SEC really needs to evaluate is they need to try to they're going to lose the case, but they need to lose it in a way to prevent further damage, meaning every single lawsuit that that the SEC is going to get into after this XRP thing is wrapped up has everything to do with this lack of fair notice. Now, when they try to go after other cryptos, all those crypto companies are going to cite this lawsuit currently right now with XRP. So the SEC needs to try to limit as much damage as possible so that when other people cite this lawsuit, the SEC can still try to win and make their money somehow. SEC not trying to step on government's toes. The SEC doesn't even want to make the decision because they don't want to be the bad guys anymore. Like at, at this point, uh, not Clayton, Clayton was the other guy. Uh, Gary Gensler, who is in charge of the SEC right now, he knows how important these regulation decisions are, that he is just being a pansy about it pretty much. I don't want to swear anything, but like he's just being so passive, he doesn't want to make a decision. He doesn't even want to say anything because he doesn't want to be the guy to blame. So he's like, oh, Congress, we need you guys to help us out and to the clarity. Like, it's it's a joke. So the SEC's like whole part of their case is just crumbling and I and the lawyers are doing a great job on trying to, you know, keep fighting for what they were told to do by the predecessor, but it's, it, it's a wrap. So we're still waiting for a summary judgment coming in September when that starts and then we'll have some further some further escalation with it but pretty much what i see happening is crypto market will still boom xrp price will still go up with it once this lawsuit is settled lawyers of the exchanges will advise the big exchanges to relist xrp and you're going to get like another good movement out of it obviously we're still waiting for xrp to get the clarity of a currency not a security however fun fact for you guys who don't know Coinbase is actually, they do have a exchange already registered to handle securities in the event that it goes that way. The crypto exchanges that have, that offer tokenized versions of stocks are all going to need to meet this compliance because these tokenized stocks are going to, these tokenized cryptos of a stock are going to be deemed a security by nature. So Coinbase has already have, has the paperwork in the license to sell securities as is. Fun little fact. So even if th things were to go bad for Ripple, then sure, they could go sell it anyways. Now, as to why uh, there's also rumor that Coinbase bought a bunch of XRP. Yeah, so there's a bunch of just XRP being moved around right now and they're tracking them to different uh, wallets and some of these are exchanges. So people are sort of you know predicting that these the relist will happen sooner than later. Um, so what I wrote in the day trade channel in regards to XDC and XRP, XDC is called Corda. 
Corda is owned by R3. R3 Labs is a huge partner of Ripple. Corda, XTC, is a separate blockchain that they created that is heavily going to be used by lots of corporations and companies and banks and institutions for settling payments. Guess what? They use the currency of XRP to make all that happen on the blockchain. So whatever benefits XDC organically benefits XRP. They're the same. They are correlated together and it's always going to be that way. So if you own XDC, it really don't matter. It's the same thing as XRP. It's just they're going to have different customers, but their blockchain literally relies on XRP to function as is based on what they say in their white papers. So this is why it really helps to understand exactly what these cryptos are doing, partnerships. If you have a hard time understanding some of the technology words, private message me or ask a question in the crypto channel. I will elaborate and explain it, but it seriously is a huge advantage if you know the technology itself. I'm going to predict right now that the back end business of the stock market, which are the clearing houses, will use cryptos in the future. And it's just, it's all about which cryptos they are using to accomplish these things. That's how you know where to put the money. And fun fact, it will never be Bitcoin. But that is just how you want to play the long game if you are going to be exposed to the crypto asset class for a long time. Government will create a new digital asset security class that's going to cover the crypto. And they're going to have it two categories, more than likely digital asset security or digital asset currency. And that's probably the most logical route to take. But we all know the government isn't that logical since, like I've said before, they didn't even understand how Facebook made money selling ad space revenue. So uh, excited for their coin earnings. Uh, Coinbase earnings should be good in theory, uh, but we shall see. Uh, there is also a lawsuit against them for the Dogecoin promotion and then the f whatever people got into initially, there was never an IPO for Coinbase. Coinbase shares went straight to the market. So when it opened at that price, it was how it's going to be. Uh, so if it's considered a currency, can certain insiders be charged for insider trading? Uh, Brody, you're talking about XRP? Or what are you, what are you referencing to, uh, with that one, Brody? Oh, uh, no. So here's the thing. The SEC has no jurisdiction of any, of, <laughs> of any exchange right now. Crypto exchanges, have you really made it if you don't have a, oh, well, that's also true. Mike. But crypto exchanges are decentralized by nature. The word decentralized means that no governing body has a control over you. So no one can be charged with insider trading because the, there's no jurisdiction. One of the latest things that uh, one of the guys from XRP just did was he he just revealed a bunch of foreign transactions on other exchanges of his own personal crypto just to show that the SEC has no jurisdiction over this stuff. So they're just wasting their time on some of these things because they have no rule. And they think that they're going to keep bullying everybody for quick cash grabs, which they will... Don't get me wrong. SEC are about to make a hundred, couple of hundred millions of dollars off this lawsuit with XRP. But for the ones to follow suit, they got to carefully plot how they're going to do it, but they'll still make their money out of it. But to your question, the, seriously, the SEC, there's no such thing as insider trading with any crypto because there's no jurisdiction on it. And that is what the big kind of... Uh, challenge that some of these people aka uh, senator elizabeth warren has is that the exchanges aren't regulated and they want them to be but that goes against the point of a decentralized exchange however if these crypto exchanges are offering centralized assets aka securities then they need to meet regulations in order to offer those securities so this is why I tell you, you are so early in the crypto realm, despite it being out for over 10 years now, 
but just think of how much more needs to get done and how many more things have to get sorted out. Decentralized exchanges, centralized exchanges, uh, digital asset class currencies, digital asset class securities. There's so much that needs to get done. It is going to take another five or 10 plus years. So that is why dollar cost averaging, DCA, DCA when you see in the crypto chat, is always the best way to go about it. But that is currently where we are with the lawsuit. It's everything is just kind of going as planned in terms of SEC is just going to drag their feet. Um, summary judgment will occur starting in September. You'll start seeing a lot of those hearings. But everything that I've seen on it, everything was pretty good. And uh, you just had the uh, two SEC chairmen literally just provide a statement to help out the Ripple lawsuit even more. Uh, Bitcoin be when Bitcoin won't be number one in the future. Uh, I'd get behind that. Bitcoin will only be a, a hedge to the dollar and just a store of digital value. So it will still go a lot, but it is um, it's definitely something to want to have a stake in. But I don't think it's gonna be number one. Ethereum to catch up, sure. Ethereum is good to develop other cryptos on but that also has this limitation uh last question is there a way to follow the big money in crypto transactions or dps yeah go on twitter and literally search whale alerts or uh what's another one uh, I, I usually just do whale alerts.io but uh, there's a couple twitter handles that literally just sit there and track uh large movements of different cryptocurrencies or i would say currencies but different cryptos and uh you can read the 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 comments and people will literally do the due diligence for you and tell you exactly who it's gone to and where where it's going which is the other big thing that the congress wants they want full disclosure of all crypto transactions to know where they go yep, no problem bro i always appreciate the questions and moon i don't what did you even type moon to what is that it is. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. To each their own on XTZ. But <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it. If, if anyone else has any questions, by all means, quickly type them in now. If not, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Still trying to figure out. Brody, the best thing you can do, uh, Mike, can you close down your, your screen so I can quickly show this again? Yep. Brody, the best way to learn the cryptos is this right here. I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, so always just go to coin market cap. Go to this. Um, go to say Cardano, click on white papers, click on any of these websites, or just click white paper and literally just dive in. You can, this is all the different platforms. Cardano is really developed over the last couple of years. But you could go to any crypto and learn about it. You want to learn about Chainlink, same thing. You can go to their white paper here or just go straight to their website and you can learn all about it. Uh, Jacob, what would you say is the best thing to invest in this week? Um, like crypto or a stock, Jacob? It's a loaded question there. Um, I see you're typing and Mr. J's typing too. Uh, whichever you think will have the best gains. I mean, all right. So right now, because we're coming up into like the last leg of, uh, of the crypto market, I mean, cryptos are always going to be bigger gains than the stock market will, unless you're utilizing options. So, I mean, you could currently right now, if you want to take a, a more conservative approach you can certainly do xlm but i mean xrp is also a good one right now i wouldn't be buying really any others right for this for the moment i think litecoin still has a huge upside to it that it hasn't run fully so you could really just utilize any of these three um 
preferred favorite is this, but just understand that there is a lawsuit on them, so things can change pretty quickly. But the most conservative one and your safest would probably be XLM, honestly. Thanks for going so much as a trader, becoming more confident and know exactly why I lost every trade I take. Need to the 15. Uh, Mr. J, I mean, I, I really appreciate the words there. It means a lot. Glad, you know, these, these lessons are helping you out and you're welcome, Jacob. Um, honestly, though, Mr. J, uh, having a flawless trading week like that is the result of having a uh, punishing like two months of trading, honestly. You got to just put your time and you got to build your experience and you have to identify what is it that you're doing to yourself that's causing so much unnecessary losses if you it can it can simply be as if the if you can't identify the trade if you can't identify your stop before you take the trade don't take it you can even better yet this one when you see a setup forming on the chart so if i'm looking at let's say gdx and right here on this day when you know, I was really contemplating puts on the daily chart, rejection off the 200, like I was just saying, and we're gonna fall down. Well, I asked myself the question, am I entering puts today because I like the idea of making money? Or do I, or am I entering puts today because it meets my rules? And the criteria is there, and regardless of the outcome, I don't actually care because I would take this entry every single time that it shows up. And if I can answer that with a yes, meaning I do not care about the outcome and I'm taking it because it meets my rules and I know where my stop is just above the 200 moving average, then I'm gonna take the trade. But if all your decisions are a root from the lust for money, hey, you're gonna keep losing for the rest of your life, just straight up, I'll tell you that right now. And if it, same thing, I don't know if you do sports bets or not, but it's the same stuff. If you're taking sports bets because you like the idea of making money and it's lustful, dude, don't do it. You got to make sure that you're just, you got a system there. You got a strategy there. It's stocks, same thing. So you're only going to get a consistent win method in trading once you just learn every single way to lose properly and professionally. Learn how to lose like a professional and you will forever learn how to win like a professional. Yep, I mean, definitely Brody, agree. Mike Taps, appreciate you coming out, stepping up, doing your thing, sharing the little golden pocket with everybody because it is truthful to it. And I mean, it really does help. I use I use fibs even on small time frame when I trade. So you can use it on dailies, weeklies, monthlies, two minute, five minute, the one minute, whatever. I see Mr. J still typing. Is there anything else? I see Mr. J typing. Yeah, I stopped treating like a casino last month. This will be my most profitable month owning on it. Yeah. All right, so I will say this though, Mr. J, you. Um, it was quoted in an amazing psychology trading book called Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. He actually will say, treat trading like a casino. And what he meant by that was, you have to use probability to your favor. Meaning, you know that you have an edge when you're trading, just like if I enter a casino, I legit know that I have an edge. I have multiple strategies on different games in the casino and I can pretty much make money every day gambling. So what you got to do though, is you just have to trust your edge. You have to be emotionless. So whether you win or you lose, it doesn't matter because you're trusting your edge over everything. So when that guy in the book said, treat trading like a casino, he's saying that don't have any emotions into it. Trust your edge, trust your strategy that you know, it's a winning strategy long t like over time. So if you lose, it don't matter. You're just gonna win based on your strategy, knowing the long-term of it. So, I mean, definitely you did the right thing, understanding that you know you don't wanna throw away money anymore. But if you do have a, a straight up strategy and an edge, 
then sure, you can go back to treating like a casino, just have risk management. You guys understand that you only need like a 30%, you could have a 30% win rate when three out of 10 trades and with proper risk management, you can still be profitable trader long-term. Just make sure your lo your losses are smaller than your winners. Yeah, your losses are smaller than your winners. You wanna have like a two to one, three to one ratio with that and you'll be all set. Yes, I'd like to know more why the 0.618 is the golden number math behind it, please. Oh, geez. Uh, so that has <laughs> that has everything to do with uh, Da Vinci, honestly, and uh, 0.618 and the Fibonacci numbers are all perfect sequences. All right, good, because I definitely don't want to go more further into that. It's like Nikola Tesla where he says, if you know the power of three, six, and nine, then you know the key to the universe. That's a pretty cool concept too, but it's true. I see a bunch of people typing, so here we go. Yeah, I, I mean, if you guys want me to, we can no, go they're, they're the math. I'll write up something on it, but it's they're, they're just messed. complicated. I think after this last thing by Mr. J, I think they'll be it. My brain's not big enough to comprehend all that. Um, all right. Collins up. Have a good night, man. Appreciate it. Hopefully the, the baby is sleeping through the night now. Not yet. We'll give it a couple more weeks. It'll be all set. All right, so pretty much that's everything for me, unless... Mr. J's got one other thing that he wants to explain, but uh, like as always, appreciate everyone's time. Jacob, Layla, hope you guys learned something from this. Um, if you have any questions you ever want to be addressed, I always put in the day trade channel. You're gonna have a huge supportive team of members here that will jump on your questions at any time. And if there's any further in depth questions that need a little bit more expertise, by all means, just tag me or Mike, Lorenzo, KJ, Paul, and we're all here to help you. So. That being said, everyone have a good week and just trade smart. And I'm telling you right now, just don't make it about the money. Make it about the process. Be obsessed with it and you will have long-term consistency. You just got to learn from it. So good night, everyone.